Hi, this is Ed Driscoll. Welcome to Silicon Graffiti. Last year, we explored the top 10 Hillary flubs of 2008. But with the Fairness Doctrine making a possible comeback, we feel that it is our civic duty to expand and diversify our coverage and explore also the gaps of the actual winners of the presidential campaign. President-elect Obama had his share of common foot-and-mouth gaffes that befall any man who spends hours a day for months on end speaking on the campaign trail. It is just wonderful to be back in Oregon, and over the last 15 months we've traveled uh, to every corner of the United States. Uh, I've now been in 57 states, I think one left to go. Or when the media coverage isn't quite as fawning as you've become accustomed. Senator, how are you going to help the American auto worker? Hold, hold on one second, sweetie. We're going to do a, we're, we'll do a press event. <laughs> this sweetie never did get an answer to that question. But President-elect Obama's gaffes tended to be of the type that Michael Kinsley described as occurring when a politician tells the truth and reveals a little bit too much about himself and his worldview. We've been consuming energy as if uh, it's infinite. We now know that uh, our demand is badly outstripping supply with China and India, uh, growing as rapidly as they are. So could you high prices help us? I think that I would have preferred a gradual adjustment. Think about the amount of money that China has spent on infrastructure. Their ports, their train systems, their airports are all vastly superior to us now, which means if you're a corporation deciding where to do business, you're starting to think Beijing looks like a pretty good option. I think when you spread the wealth around, it's good for it. America uh, is, is no longer uh, what it, it could be, what it once was. You go into some of these small towns in, in, in Pennsylvania, a lot of, like a lot of small towns in the Midwest, you know, it's not surprising that they get better they claim to guns or religion or uh, antipathy towards people who aren't like them, but anti-immigrant But once Obama chose Joe Biden as his running mate, all bets were off. Some pundits and video bloggers suggested that the Obama camp picking Joe Biden as his running mate was an example of Seinfeldian opposite theory in action. Something is happening in my life. I did this opposite thing last night. Up was down, black was white, good was bad, day was nice. Yes! <laughs> So you just did the opposite of everything. Yes! And listen to this, listen to this. A job with the New York Yankees. This has been the dream of my life ever since I was a child. And it's all happening because I'm completely ignoring every urge towards common sense and good judgment I've ever had. Which might help to explain why the combined gas from the two candidates started immediately merging into one gigantic super gap, the Pangea gas. On August 23rd, when Biden was publicly announced as the next president. The next Vice President of the United States of America, Joe Biden! And Biden responded by thanking Barack America? A man who will be the next President of the United States, Barack America. And so without further ado, from the Home Office in Dover, Delaware, the top 10 gas from Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. Number 10. Biden announces presidential bid, odds of victory plummet the very same day. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. Yeah. Number nine, Sweet Home Wilming. You don't know my state. My state was a slave state. My state is a border state. My state is the eighth largest black population in the country. My state is anything from a Northeast liberal state. Number eight. Oh, thank heavens for 7-Eleven. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. It's a fully, I'm not joking. Number seven. Channeling the spirit of John Edwards, channeling the spirit of Christopher Reed. Stand up, Chuck. Let him see you. Oh, God love you. What am I talking about? Number six. Working in a coal mine. No coal plants here in America. Build them if they're going to build them over there. Make them clean because you're killing you. Woo! See ya. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Number five. Puma, Puma, Puma. Hillary Clinton is as qualified or more qualified than I am to be Vice President of the United States of America. Let's get that straight. Number four. 
1929, the golden age of TV. When the stock market crashed, Franklin Roosevelt got on television and didn't just talk about the, you know, the, the princes of greed. He said, look, here's what happened. Number three. It's 3 a.m. There's a phone inside the bunker buried miles underground where all vice presidents are housed so that they can cause the least amount of trouble. It's ringing. Joe, what's the biggest crisis you expect to face? Air that has too much cold in it, corpse, corn syrup next, then a terrorist attack. But that is not in any way to diminish the fact that a terrorist attack is real. It is not an existential threat to bringing down the country, but it does have the capacity still to kill thousands of people. But hundreds of thousands of people die and their lives are shortened because of coal plants, coal-fired plants, and because of corn syrup. Number two. Give it away, give it away, give it away. John Pickens walked into the thrift shop behind me a couple of days ago like he does almost every other week. He was looking for a white-collared shirt. He found not one, but three of them. When he got home, he found what appears to be cufflinks belonging to Vice President-elect Joe Biden. Those are his shirts, and he probably won his couplings. <laughs> you know, he probably don't want the shirts anymore, yeah. but he wanted his couplings. But he couldn't be sure they belonged to the vice president-elect. Then I went to a, a, a jeweler uh, in Center City, just one, took one of the couplings, just to see whether it was just fake. And some he said, oh no, it's a solid gold. Pickens believes if the cufflinks do belong to Vice President-elect Biden, he'd surely want them back. So he called Action News to see if we'd be able to reach out to Biden's people. He's not looking for any reward or publicity. He just wants to return these very nice cufflinks. And the number one Joe Biden gap. Check out the big brain on Joe. What law school did you attend? Where did you place in that class? And the other question oh, is, could you quickly... I, I think, we I, I, think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. In the first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two-thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school, and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I won the international moot court competition. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only needed 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. But you know what I find kind of interesting? It seems to me if you can speak, you're at a liability in the Democratic Party anymore. Well, it seems safe to say that Joe's pretty darn safe in that department. So for Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Neil Kinnock, and everyone here at Silicon Graffiti, I'm Ed Driscoll.